Good everyone. I hope you guys have an amazing day. So in the last episode, we, uh, you know, I talked about the UX research stuff, right? I gave you a brief explanation what it's about and how you can carry out the UX stuff, right? Today, I'm going to talk about how to craft your questions, right? Obviously, uh, it's important to ask if you're building a functionality for a customer, right? You need to obviously, you know, ask the right question to a customer, right? It's very important to frame the right questions. Your, your questions uh, should be should not be very open ended, right? Because it can cause confusion. And also at the same time, your question should be shouldn't be too close ended as well, right? So when you are doing a UX research, right? Forming a right question, asking the right question, is extremely important. Now that is obviously governed by the kind of people you're going to interview, right? That's why the persona is important, right? The kind of people, like I gave an example in the previous episode, right? Like if you are going to interview someone to understand what they think about a new functionality in any point studio, then you have to select a technical consultant or a developer or an architect. You can't ask an end user who never, um, you know, is not going to build anything on any point studio, right? So it's pointless. So the same way, you need to understand your targeted audience, right? You need to build a persona and maybe spend half an hour trying to form a question. Or, I mean, frame a question which will fit in a 30 minutes time, zone, time frame. So the question should be like, first of all, like, for instance, if you're building a functionality, sales, say, for instance, a Salesforce or Word, let's say you're building a new form, right? So if you're building a new form, right? So first question, the way you should start, first of all, you need to understand the working style, right? Let's say you're interviewing a support person, right? Who, who will be most likely working on that new screen? So you should uh, start with the question, hey, can you tell me how your day look like? You know, what, what's the stuff you mostly work on, right? And they often feel more comfortable, you know, answering the question, hey, my day start from here. I end up in doing this. I take so many support queries. I create this case. I close the case and, you know, whatnot, right? Which is great. Now then you can say, hey, do you know we are building this particular form and to help you do certain things? So, and what do you think about it? So obviously that seems like an open-ended question, but but the way you frame it, right, instead of saying, hey, this is a form and this is exactly what we're going to build, I hope you like it, right? What do you think? That's a bad question. Right? It's like you're telling, you're dictating your, your customer, hey, this is what we're building because we know what, what you think, you know, and we know that what we are building is what exactly what you want. That's a very bad, that's a very bad way of doing a business with the customer, right? So you need to, you know, tell them, hey, this is exactly what we're proposing. Uh, what's your opinion on it, right? Do you have any feedback so that we can, you know, work together, okay? Um, so if the customer say, hey, I have, I think you should include this functionality, that functionality, then you can say, hey, you know what? We have built a bit of a, a wireframe. Would you like to have a look at it? And then we can see if the positioning of uh, of the of of the fields are in the right place. Would you like to see, for instance, account number first, or would you like to see uh, active status at the end, or you know something like that, right? Just, I mean, I know that I'm so very super. I'm, I'm simplifying it very. I'm I'm simplifying it uh, to the core that um, it might may not make sense, right? You must be thinking, hey, what this guy is talking about, right? I mean, I just wanted to you know talk about the concept, right? So just taking a very simple example. Uh, I don't want to, you know, talk about mouthful of things, right? Then you get confused. So just stick to the simple, all right? So this way I can <clears throat> explain you the concept and then you can, you know, innovate it based on your business requirement. So, you know, like I said, right, you can obviously work with the customer to say, hey, this is what we're building. What do you think about it? And what do you, what do you think about the field positioning of this page? Or what do you think about the color? Or what do you think about the submit button at the bottom? And we're going to use Control S to submit using a keyboard shortcut. Are you happy with that? Or would you think keyboard shortcuts are not required? Or, or to begin with, you can even ask them, do you even need a keyboard shortcuts to begin with, right? Some customers, <clears throat> excuse me, are comfortable using mouse. Some customers are comfortable using keyboard. So 
depending upon who you interviewing right and depending upon the group of and and the one thing you just need to understand right if you're interviewing support person right it's always good to interview three to four at least five people right so you get different variation and then you can work out the mean or you know variance whatever right so that's how you know the question answer should be formed it though i explain in a very simple way but this is a starting point right and i think the ux if you're doing a ux research right asking right question is very important and choosing the right persona is very important because you need to know who you're targeting right if you don't know who you're targeting then you end up in asking the wrong question to the wrong person and then you will not be able to get the desired output which is not exactly what we are after right we need to respect the customer time and you need to respect your time as well right and based on that feedback what you get from a customer you need to take it back to the development team or to architect to say hey this is what customer proposed and what do you think right so that's how the, the 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 question answer should be framed so that it's helpful to everyone right so yeah i mean this is a small topic but it's a very powerful topic in my opinion because asking the right question is a key for any product success right product development sh involves should involve customer feedback which is very important right that's why you know most of the companies follow agile or you know other a process a waterfall does not really work in today's scenario right though it could under some like maybe for a complex erp implementation you may use waterfall model but in general it's not really a good approach if you wanted to you know if you're relying on a customer feedback then waterfall won't really work right you might have to go with agile or other scrum or whatever right i really don't want to get into that but I'm just giving you a you know a different context so yeah i mean i hope this is clear and i hope that if you are a ux designer you might already be doing it if not then perhaps have a look at it and see what you think right maybe you might find this idea hmm, oh this is great we can we can leverage some of this we can leverage some of this stuff right so yeah it's important right it's, and like like i said it's it's a case by case right so so that being said i hope you guys having uh, have an amazing Tuesday. Adios.